the Flavian Christians yeah. that you're talking about may not have even been aware of this Jewish guy who supposedly was named Jesus Christ. They would, they would have been focused on the imperial Christ that you're... Absolutely. They wouldn't even have known. Of course. I mean, that, so the Judaizing effort doesn't come in until the second century, which is what I'm Right, and that's I'm why saying. it's so interesting that the Catholic Church then claims them as saints. Why did, why did the Catholic Church claim go for... Why did they claim them? Well, because that's as, as early as they can get with, with Christianity, huh? I guess, yeah. I mean, and, and they were big time saints, like Neros and Aklis, where, where they had the, the diocese, first diocese churches. Yeah. So their Christ would be Titus, or some hybrid historical, quasi historical figure. That, their Christ would be that, and then you don't find the Judaizing effort until later in the second century. That's how kind of, I think that's very logical. Well, I, I, I absolutely agree that it was not Judaized until after Marcion. So, so the Roman, Roman Christian, early Roman Christianity of the first century would be focused on this Titus figure. Okay, so what we, what you would seem to have then is in. Antioch, for example, Syria, you have some kind of Gnosticizing effort going on with their salvation cultist figure. You have the Samaritans with their Joshua figure. You have the uh, Egyptians with uh, their various god figures, including Serapis, of course. You have um, Greeks are attaching themselves to Serapis at that point. Uh, let's see, you would have, oh, well, Marcion is part of the, uh, that's later on, is part of the uh, Syrian effort. But in Rome, you have this imperial cult with the messianic figure as Titus. Huh? That actually makes a bit of sense because then all of those other efforts, the Egyptian, the Syrian, the Judean, uh, the Judean Messiah is the one we're still kind of missing. It's still to be fulfilled in there. But the Samaritans have their salvation cult, the jo Joshua cult is going on, and I think that's reflected in the Dead Sea Scrolls as well. And so you have those factions going on, and they're all streaming together into the second century, uh, and bringing it over really kind of towards Alexandria. And then, so then, at, at, then at that point, the, the one that has the most amount of historicity would be the Titus figure, right? So you would have these Gnostic salvation cults, all these different streams, but the only one with any, the only one that could be placed in history would be the one with this typology, this Titus typology. And so then at that point, that figure takes on the Egyptian parallels and the Krishna parallels and then becomes Judaized. That's what it looks like to me. So that by the end of the second century, ploof, we have Jesus Christ. That's an amazing statement. And I mean, I'm in awe. You're the only person in the world that could have done that. You are, you are the only one who understands I, I mean, the film. I mean, because you just <laughs> tied together <laughs> about, about seven or eight streams. I don't know how your brain <laughs> didn't, didn't, didn't like start <laughs> putting smoke out. But that was absolutely freaking spectacular. I hope the camera Oh, it. that was good. Right. Yeah, that was yeah, fun. That, that, was, that was awesome. <laughs> that was fun from my perspective, too. <laughs> Because I saw oh, you wow. just putting it together in real. It needs to get to the point of their neighborhood itself being ruined before they get it through their fucking heads. That egalitarianism and anti-traditionalism is a fatal game. I think most people understand that. But um, the, the catch-22 is that you have to keep paying lip service to the establishment and to the establishment narratives if you want to have the money to be able to retain some degree of that. You know, if you want to have a nice family, home, where your kids can play outside without adult supervision, uh, it's increasingly becoming a, an upper middle class luxury or privilege to be able, I mean, I always say this, it's increasingly in America a luxury to have uh, your children be safe from black crime, from, from MS-13, from 
drugs and alcohol and all the various social problems and, and, and demographic problems America is suffering right now. So if you want to get that, you got to be in the white collar professions, which of course are incredibly strict with the political views of their employees. So if you, if you write something on Facebook that might contradict some of that, you will get fired immediately. Uh, Serge B donates $10. Stay strong brothers and keep up the good work. Uh, Thank you, sir. Oh, oh, and I forgot, I forgot. I wanted to add to what, uh, what you were saying with the Juice Rock uh, donation. That yeah, I mean, I've I've been of the opinion for a long time that people need people are gonna need to get very uncomfortable. I think before things really change. It's it, I mean, struggle is such an important part. I think aspect of of uh, our beliefs and ideology. I just. I, there are so many people who want to be comfortable because I mean, boomerism. Like we make fun of the boomers for this, but there's a reason why we have we call we refer also to spiritual boomerism that that it's not just the age range that makes you a boomer, although they you know that they tend to embody those values more than anything. The boomers grew up in a time of incredible decadence, luxury, and want for nothing. And that attitude, you can see, like it's trickled down to many, to all, to future generations, 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 many people in it. But it's just this attitude, like I got mine, fuck you, is going to be such an important thing to break for us to make, there's, see. There's, any progress. there's a lack of solidarity in our country. Country, yeah. let's be honest, mm -hmm. it's 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 a problem of America and Americanism. Yep. The assumption is that as long as I'm not a Nazi, my family will be okay. Yep. And that's simply not true anymore. You yeah, know, and, the, and the, the point the point of national socialism is that you are forced to take. I mean, national socialism in of itself. If we were to just cut out all the hyper ideological stuff, it's really just normal people uh, politicizing what's normal: defense of the family, defense of figurative art, defense of traditional culture, and defense of race. These are things that come to people intuitively. Uh, what's not natural is liberalism which does the opposite. Liberalism seeks to make men into capital, right? Capital, capital itself is raceless, genderless. Um, capital has no tradition. Well, they want to do that, but with people. So if you're against that, you have to essentially take up a, a kind of mantle, a kind of banner, which is one that prizes the, the pure illiberalism. And so I think for a lot of people out there, um, they – like, 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 say the Proud Boys, right? The Proud Boys have always thought that as long as they condemn the Nazis, then they'll be okay. Clearly, that's not true anymore, right? They, mm -hmm. They're getting hit as hard as the Nazis were. So once that myth that you'll be okay as long as you're not a Nazi dies, um, that's when you're going to start seeing radical political changes, more so than on the margins, but in the mainstream as well.